Welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. Today I've got a really cool video for you guys because this is something that I'm getting a lot of emails on and people are asking questions and there's been updates, all right, since the last time we did this. Today we're going to look at E6 Connect Golf Simulator software, but the iOS version, all right? So I'm doing a screen recording on both my iPhone 12 Pro and also the latest generation iPad Pro. So you guys are gonna be able to take a look at the graphics, but more importantly, what's going to be changing with this latest update to the 1.4.8 E6 Connect iOS version. Now, they say this is a major change. Basically, they fully converted to Metal uh, API. So Apple does have a Metal API that basically, uh, it allows for a more seamless communication between the GPU and the app. All right, and it, it can help frame loss, it can actually improve graphics and things. So basically they said it should manifest uh, into some subtle changes uh, to also major changes in visuals and performance, um, such as the aliasing and uh, slight or significant frame rate increases in some courses and menus. So basically it's taking more advantage of that GPU. All right, before they used to compete in order to, com to communicate and with this uh, Metal API, it's actually been out for a little while. Um, they've been using it for years now. Um, so now this app is taking advantage of that and it's supposed to give us some smooth, you know, frame rate, uh, limitations you know that were there before maybe on some older devices but also even on newer devices I could see a little stutter here and there so this will be interesting to test so let's first just go uh, I'm gonna go to play golf all right and I'm gonna go to next and we'll also talk about some of the other updates in this version uh, so let's just go to next again and let's go to Asiana Country Club first all right and then we'll just go tee off and then we'll do some flyovers for you guys. So you'll be able to see the graphics both on my iPad Pro and then iPhone. Now I know some people mentioned before that the iPhone was really scaled down. Um, and I'm actually seeing similar graphics now on the iPhone and the iPad. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our little menu here and let's go ahead and see if I can hit this drone button on the phone and the iPad at the same time. There we go. And I'm looking at both the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPad, and I'm seeing very similar smooth motion. Looks like we have a pin in a different location. That's kind of funny, I didn't think about that. Um, let's go ahead and go to our next hole. All right, there we go. And then I'll uh, fill you guys in on a couple of these other changes really quick while we have a second. So resume game closest to the pin and long drive can now be resumed in the resume menu. Um, when you're using a demo mode license, a small watermark will now be at the bottom of the screen. And then uh, your club select menu, the selected club is now highlighted and the auto caddy can be toggled on and off. Uh, zoom to aim marker is added, all right, which was really awesome. People have been using that for a while now on the full version, the PC version. Um, they now have that here on the iOS version, okay? Um, and then on the par three courses, they changed the default aim marker okay, to be near the pin, all right, for easier viewing. Before, you kind of had to be careful there. Um, you could be aimed, you know, in a, in a bad spot. So let's go ahead and hit our flyover again here. I'm seeing very similar graphics on both this iPad Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro, where before, I would have to agree with others' comments that the iPhone was, you know, pretty significantly scaled down from what I could tell. Now I understand they, they wanna make this iOS version, you know, somewhat available for people that may have older devices, you know, and obviously some people, oh, not, how about that? I missed a, uh, accidentally aimed. And I'll tell you what I can do for you guys. Why don't I show this really quick? So if you tap, okay, on the screen, wherever you wanna aim, let's say you wanna aim at the green and you wanna see what's up by the green, well, you can hit this zoom button all right, and I'll do the same thing on my iPad. I'll just kind of tap by the green and hit the zoom button. All right, um, and that actually wasn't that good of a, a tap. So if you just tap right here, there we go. Um, and obviously on the smaller screens, I'll tell you guys, it's not as easy to tap around. Um, you may want to get yourself a little stylus. I'm using my finger right now, um, and it's not that easy. So see how you can zoom in, and then it allows you to move around and actually comes back automatically, okay? Um, after so long. So that's something you guys should understand too. So let's go ahead and just try to do a flyover on this really quick. There we go. Got them both started at the same time. On the iPhone, it, it, it can be, you know, a little tricky to tap, you know, exact spots. 
Um, not going to lie, you know, all the icons and everything are pretty small on my iPhone 12 Pro. Um, if you have the Max, it might be a little bit easier for you. All right, so we've, we've taken a pretty decent look at Asiana here. Let's go ahead and just exit out to the main menu. And let's go back to play golf. All right. And I'll tell you what I'll do. Why don't I go to the demo course? And there's a reason I'm going to do that because you could actually download the demo course and see how it's performing on your device versus these devices. So I think this would actually be very useful for people to do a comparison. Maybe you have an iPhone that's a couple generations older, uh, an iPad, Air, or something along those lines. You'd be able to see what the difference is doing the same thing with yours versus these two. So let's do a flyover really quick. You know, Aviera. Uh, being the demo course, I think a lot of people played it when they were demoing in the beginning, so they played it a million times um, with people testing the software that may not have purchased it yet, etc. But I'll tell you what, it's a fun course. I mean, it's one of those courses where, uh, you know, I actually haven't played it in a while. Um, it might be something I recommend, um, you know, whoever I'm playing with next that uh, we actually play because it's actually a really nice course. And if you haven't been able to download the demo version, you should. If you have a device or if you don't have a device, I know this, a lot of the people that have been sending these questions um, are looking at the FlightScope Mevo Plus, or they're looking at the SkyTrack, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of those higher volume type units. Um, if you're looking at Unicore or you're looking at, um, you know, other, uh, there's a lot of different launch monitors that hook up, uh, you know, to E6 Connect. You have Foresight that connects now. Um, you have TrackMan that connects, you know, so all, all kinds of different hardware. Um, you know, even some of the, the really low end uh, launch monitors that connect. Here's just a little par three we can just look at really quick. And there you go. I, I did it again. I hit the, the, the icons are small. So let's just do this. I'll tell you what, because that's there, let's go ahead and tap and uh, let's tap up on the green. And let's use that zoom button on the iPhone, and let's see how easy this is to use. Uh, let's say you wanted to move around. All right, you can actually move around. And the one thing that I'm noticing is, is I don't see the green grid uh, that's on, on the iOS version. That might be something that they don't have, something that you guys should be aware of. Uh, I don't see the green grid in that uh, zoom in option. That might be something we have to ask them about. Let's see if we can do another fly over here without tapping. Nope, I did it again. I'll tell you what, it, the icons are small. You really have to, there we go. And I'm trying to do two at once. So, I mean, if you if you were doing just a single device, it probably would be a little bit easier, you know, to pay attention. I think a stylus would be the way to go. If you had, uh, if you were playing into a net, you could get a nice little tripod with the spring loaded at the top. Um, and then you could, you know, use a little stylus and you know, move it around, um, you know, with the stylus right on an, uh, you know, an iPhone on a tripod. So that might be something people look at because you can get into a uh, a really entry level setup. So let's say you just had a mat and a net and a Mevo Plus or a SkyTrack. You could use this iOS version, which actually comes with the FlightScope Mevo Plus, and be ready to go. So I mean, most people that have an iPhone, I mean, you wouldn't even have to buy a device. Or a lot of people who have an iPad. I'd be very interested to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. I'd love for you to comment below and let me know uh, what device you have, if you can compare to this, and let me know if there's frame loss. Let me know if there's a graphic quality difference. Um, anything along those lines, I'd really like to know um, because I think that that would be you know, very useful to people to see. I'm seeing very, very similar graphic quality on both. Like if I look at the greenery right now on both devices, it looks very similar. I mean, it's obviously downscaled, you know, quite significantly versus uh, the PC. So um, here's another part three. Let's just skip ahead. I wanted to give you guys one more good flyover. I'm getting a little more used to the small buttons. I just, I more more along the lines just have to pay attention to the, uh, oh, there we go, right as I say something. Um, I have to pay attention to the phone, which has the smaller icons, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I think that especially on the iPhone, I think I'm seeing that little increase in graphic quality, like they're saying. I mean, I'm obviously seeing some very smooth movement, um, you know, and, and it's, they said even in the menus, you could see a, a better movement, which, you know, if I tap all these, you know, at the same time, it looks like it's loading very fast. Um, we can go to one of the games for you guys really quick. 
course now I'm hitting the iPad in the wrong one. Um, I think I have these. Let's go to darts really quick. So you guys can see that. Darts. Just kind of look, look at that, give you a little idea. Very loud sound effects on darts. And then uh, we can exit this round. And let's just go to main menu again, I guess. And let's go to games next. And then we'll go to that blackout game. So you guys can take a look at that. There you go. All right. So you can uh, kind of see the graphic quality there on both the games. And I hope this has been an excellent overview for you guys. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to test along the way. Uh, sorry, the background images change automatically. There's not much I can do there, you know, as far as matching those up. But uh, I can, can tell you that between the menus and like those background graphics and everything, they're, they're very crisp on both devices, I'm sure, as you can see. So, um, you know, I really hope this has been a great overview of the graphic quality with the most recent E6 Connect Golf Simulator uh, software update. That's the 1.4.8. And as I mentioned before, this is with the iPhone 12 Pro compared to the latest generation iPad Pro. So if you guys have questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. Always email me if you're looking at any hardware or software. I'd love to connect to you. And I appreciate you guys watching as always. We'll talk to you soon.